Well, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my Ford Transit Camperman build. And this episode I'm going to be installing a Victron Multi Plus inverted charger. So, some of my subscribers will know I already have a Victron Phoenix uh, inverter and a separate battery charger. But the opportunity came up when a friend offered to buy those off me and I'm going to replace it with a Multi Plus. So, let's get on that. What we're going to do is, this is probably going to be split up into three videos. So I just want to say that the sole purpose of this video is to look at the Multi Plus unit itself and to look at the 240 volt wiring and how it's all set up. So there's no actual installation in this video, but uh, well worth a watch if you're looking at buying a Multi Plus for installing it and you want to know the backgrounds or how the unit works and how I'm going to be setting up the 240 volt. If you just want to see the installation and wiring, um, find part two of the video. So let's get started. First off, I've got this box of goodies and let's go through what's in it. First up, consumer units. So, I've got two consumer units and it seems the correct way from speaking to a Victron authorised dealer and looking at all the schematics is you install this with two consumer units um, because the inverter can be, or the Multi Plus can be AC pass through and it can be standalone um, inverter off the batteries, which means I need a consumer unit upstream and downstream of the inverter. So one will do the protection when the inverter is effectively working on pass through. So that's going to be after the electrical hookup and then it's going to be the Multi Plus. And this one is also they're going to protect that. But when the Multi Plus is just on its inverter mode running off the batteries, that will be doing um, protection from there. And I'll go through what these are actually involved, but effectively they are RDCs and MB MCBs. Um, I will go through what are actually sort of in these when we get to installing them, but so two of those. Um, 1.5 millimeter Arctic Blue, which is Tricor Live Neutral and F. Uh, the one, the smaller stuff, the 1.5 stuff, is going inside the band of the internal wiring, and the external stuff, uh, or the 2.5 millimeter stuff, again, which is Arctic Blue, which is sort of designed for sort of outdoor environments. The sheath is a little bit better in colder weather. Uh, that's going to be for the the main hookup points. Hookup cable using this style. This is my hookup point, this is going to be going under the van and this is a plug, if it's got pronged it's a plug unlike the other end which is a socket. The reason it's like that is so the prongs are never going to be live so you can't do that and well barbecue yourself. The live end is always going to be the end uh, which is the socket. Although it does confuse because you're plugging into the the plug, but it's this is a plug, not a socket. More cables, so the main um, DC cables to the batteries to the inverter, and Victor recommends you use 50 millimeter for this. So I'm going to have the main positive, uh, which is 50 mil, and then the main negative. The negative is a little bit longer because I've got to redo the wires from the shunt as well. Associated paraphernalia, so the lugs. Which I think are 50 mil to M8, which is for the fuse box. I'm going to be using mega fuses, which is 175 amp. And then for the actual lugs to the shunt are the 50 mil to 10 M M10 volts. Next up, we have the uh, MK3 to USB converter. So whilst uh, other things in the band like the the Victron BMV and the the MPPT, they work on VE Direct, which is their connection system. Uh, these work, this works on VE bus, so this is the conversion cable to turn the bus, uh, VE bus into USB. We're going to be using this later on for the programming, um, so we can set up some of the, the parts I want to set up on the computer on the Multi Plus, and then we're going to use it to plug that into the Raspberry Pi, uh, which is running my Venus OS, so then I can monitor everything remotely. One uh, Multi Plus control panel, which is, means I've got control of off on, or charger only feature, and a few little readouts, and I can limit the um, the ampage coming in on the AC. I'm going to install that somewhere accessible, so I can just turn the inverter on off. I'll see what it's doing. 10 millimeter cable. I'm going to be using it for the earth, and we're going to talk about the whole earthing bit later on. Um, so I'm just going to be using 10 mil cable, and I'm going to get a green and yellow sheath through it, so it looks like the earth, as I couldn't find any FlexiCore earth cables. A couple glands for waterproofing. Anything else? The Multi Plus itself. Um, let me clear some space. And 
one Victor Almighty Plus. So I've gone for the 12 volt, 1600 VA, 70 amp charger. Equivalently in the minute, I've got the 12 volt Phoenix, which is in 1200 VA uh, and a 30 amp charger. Since the 1200 VA version was gonna be the 50 amp charger, I decided it wasn't that much more and to go for the 1600 and the 70. So, uh, plugs, we'll talk about those in a minute. Silicon, everyone loves those. A temperature sensor, which I think is going to be useless for us. And a big blue thing. Let's see if we can get this out. Alright, so this is sort of the, the newer model of the, um, well not the newer model. This is the sort of updated case version of the original Multi Plus. There's also Multi Plus 2 now. But you see the Multi Plus Compact in, in the metal case, and that's got side vents. Whilst this one is a straight through unit, so the Phoenix, so air comes in the bottom and is blown out the top. Or the other way around, I can't remember which. So on the front of it, got the, the lights, see so what it's doing, inverter, charger. On the top, we've got the main vent, mounting points, nice little thing telling you how it all works. I'll just do a close up so I can give you sort of an anatomy of what's going on in there. Right, the anatomy of what's going on. Uh, the obvious two ones, you've got the DC in, um, positive and negative. You've got the VE bus, which is the sort of communications connection for the device. So I'm going to be using that. That's how you connect that little control panel I've got. And that's how you can connect the USB. Your switch, so you can put it on off um, charge. Although with the exterior control panel, that does over overrule it. Settings, if you don't have the connection, you can do a bunch of settings via the dip switches in there. The AC out, the AC coming in. Uh, remote bridge, so if you pull that out, the inverter probably won't start, similar to a lot of the other bits of it from kit. A temperature sensor, which it came with, which is this. I don't think we're gonna be using this temperature sensor because as far as I can see from the manual, all this temperature sensor does do temperature compensation for charging batteries. And since I'm using uh, lithium batteries, temperature compensation for charging isn't necessary. Over here, we've got a relay. Uh, which can be set as an alarm uh, and controlled as a relay. The earthing point, which is what we're going to be using to earth the system. And the little known feature, which many, which most people I spoke to didn't know existed, is the second uh, battery charger, which is designed for charging an AUX or a starter battery. However, this is positive only. Um, so this charges at one amp and is a, volt, a few voltage, a few points of voltage below the charge state of, of however your charger charge state is set. Last but not least, what is actually in here? So the main things we've got here are the plugs for going into here, like so, and then this little locking piece as well, which took me a while to figure out what it actually is. It means you gotta make sure these never come out. Put it in there, plug those in, and screw that directly in there, and then your cables can't come out. So, first off for this episode, um, we are going to be playing with AC things. So, regarding doing anything with sort of AC electricity, check your local regulations that you are allowed to do it yourself, or because it might be different for different countries. In the UK, it seems I'm fine doing this for myself because it's my personal van. Um, and if you're not happy doing an event, just get a professional to do it. You know, I know it's a self-building channel, but if you're not happy to do something, get someone to do it for you. Um, which is the case for what I'm going to do for the gas. Uh, you know, although I've done almost everything in the van myself, I'm not confident in the skill set I've got for doing the gas, so I'm going to get someone else to do it for me. Um, so same for you, Tracy, if you're happy doing with the with the 12 volt or the, and the AC, just get someone to do it for you. No shame in that. So, let's get on. Right, so I'm going to show you how um, everything I'm going to wire it up. So we've got AC coming in for your hookup into my first consumer unit, which is my one for the AC in. Uh, consumer unit is basically a fancy name of a box containing your RCD, which is your resi uh, residual current device, and your MCV, which is a min your miniature circuit breaker, into the AC in on the Multi Plus. Uh, and then on the AC out, we've got the my second consumer unit, which is this time has got a, another RCD, and then two miniature cir circuit breakers, a 10 amp one and a 6 amp one. Um, not so much because I'm going to be hitting 10 amps or 6 amps off this inverter, but more so I can have um, two circuits I can control in the van. Earthwise, I'm not going to earth directly from the consumer units because the earth from the consumer is it goes into the Multi Plus, 
uh, as it's continuous and that is linked to the earth unit on the multi plus if anyone wants to see in the, if you look in your manual the earth is always continuous and always linked to the chassis of the multi plus and that is going to be then bonded to the chassis of the van and now i can hear a thousand angry keyboard warriors frantically typing away Pfft, earth van ridiculous rubber tires Well, well noticed. Um, but that, in this case, at least when the inverter itself is running or set up, that's not the sort of the reason. Um, it's so it's for the RCD to come into play. And whilst people are going to go put the RCDs, aren't related to Earth. RCD doesn't use Earth. That is true. It's only for live and neutral. But what's going to happen is if the live well, actually, first I'll explain how these devices work a little bit better. But we've got the RCD, which is working by comparing the current going through live and neutral. So uh, the way that works, actually, is it's a coil of wire coiled around one way, and that make coils of copper wire make an electric field. And then on the other way, it's called the opposite way, which makes electric field that makes two opposite electric fields which cancel each other out so the way this works is if one of those found an alternative route so for instance the live touched the chassis and then it found the chassis as an alternative route that would mean that the electric fields in there became unequal and which would then trip the device that's how those work um, this is a type a RCD and it works within I think 30 milliseconds which I believe is quicker than it would take the AC to um, well trip out your heart and for the miniature circuit breakers you can go f if you go for garage unit usually only single pole uh, while I've gone for one designed for camper vans and caravans um, which are dual pole so both the live and neutral go through the um, circuit breaker as well the reason the those are important and the earth and your earth going to the chassis is if your live touched the chassis, uh, which is also connected to the earth, that then senses the imbalance and would trip. Whilst if you didn't have the earth connected to the chassis and the chassis was um, became live, if you're in the van, nothing bad's going to happen because you're on those four rubber tyres. But when you step out of the vehicle, and if you're unlucky enough to be touching the ground and touching the metalwork of the van, there is now a new path for that live uh, to earth, which is through you. Uh, and that's where it becomes problematic. And there have been incidences um, in the past of where that has you know, killed people. So that is why I'm going for earthing the chassis or bonding the earth to the vehicle chassis. When it's on electrical hookup, the earth itself will be also supplied by the electrical hookup point. And other things will be happening at other points as well. When the inverter is on its um, inverting mode, it will bond neutral and earth together. It's an important device to save your life, basically. That one's the fuse save it saves your stuff from breaking, or the wires breaking, and that saves you from breaking. Another point um, is a lot of people are going to say that well. At the source of your at the source of your AC in, it should also be um, fused and have an RCD, which is correct. But that's not that's not taking out of account that maybe the caravan site you're using is annoyed with nuisance trips, so they've just taped that down so it's not functioning, which has been known to happen. So I'd rather have the additional option of that I'm contr in control of the safety there as well in case something is wrong back there or it's been set up incorrectly and again for both if you go for the, on the Victron website and you look at their schematic for their schematic for their multi plus it also shows the same of their shore coming in into a um, RCD and MCB into the inverter AC in and then on the AC out going into a second one of that Additionally, if you find the Victron um, Wiring Unlimited guide, it shows a similar system. Although using a uh, boat, a boat and the hull as the <coughs> example, it does mention if you've got the uh, a, a van replaced, the idea of the hull with a van chassis. So that's why the same. Uh, both the consumer units are going to be 
joined to the earth via the earth point on the in the inverter itself. Right, all of the angry comments you can now write them up, but uh, let's crack on with getting the old inverter out. So this is my electrical cupboard. I'm going to be taking out the Phoenix and the battery charger as well, and that's the new location that the inverter is going to go. So time to get it all switched off. Solar is isolated, blah, 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 um, and we'll crack on. If anyone ever wanted a comparison sidewise between the Phoenix 1200 and the Multi Plus 1600, um, it's a wee bit bigger, but it's not massively bigger at all. So that's pretty much going to end this video here. Uh, didn't really do that much of the actual install but we looked at the unit and all the different parts involved and how I'm going to set up how the um, what the consumer units are for and what they're doing and then so next episode we're going to look at doing the electrical hookup points as well as uh, wiring up the consumer units and sorting out and getting that all installed and hopefully turning on the unit for the first time uh, we're going to look at earthing the consumer units to the van's chassis so that's pretty much going to end the video here and whilst we didn't do much of the actual install, we sort of looked at what the units kind of got in it about the actual model plus itself and sort of setting up about what we're going to be doing in the next episode. For that one, hopefully next episode we'll be installing, wiring up and installing the consumer units, doing the earth to the van chassis and the, also installing the electrical hookup point. So once again, thank you very much for joining me. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to subscribe, shoot me some messages on Instagram, comment below and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.